Hey everyone, I hope all of you had an amazing day and welcome back to Kayan Al Bashar. So today we are going to basically finish off the flooded cigarette. I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing it right this time, but I think not. And I think you guys probably have already given up on the way I pronounce things. So let's move on. But today it's mostly just going to be plants and a little like a teeny tiny bit of actual building buildings but mostly it's just going to be finishing off the rest building all the plants and yeah i have gone completely overboard with the plants although by now i do have like some sort of like catalog of like these plants are probably i think the right word is endemic to kian al bashar and yeah i'm going to talk about plants today which well might not be the completely most interesting topic but i mean that's what mo we mostly are doing today so anyway so i think i've talked about plants a lot of times but usually just like quickly heads up of like this is what i'm doing this is what i'm doing and not really well maybe going into it but then again like spread around videos so uh yeah <laughs> anyway so it's funny that like I want to start talking about plants and then I'm making a waterfall. I mean, uh, well, the water of the flooded cigarette needed to go somewhere. <laughs> and well, there is a magical aspect to Kayan Al Bashar, of course, but I still want a little bit of like, all right, this is where the water is going. And, you know, not that everything is like, oh, magic. That there is a little bit of realism or at least some realistic factor to Kian al -Bashar. So, you know, if there's a waterfall, then the water needs to go somewhere also. And if there isn't any place where the water goes, then there must be like some way that the water is being used. Which is going to be then the reason why there is no, well, let's just say drainage for the waterfall. Yeah, it's still fun to me that the moment I wanted to talk about plants, I start building a waterfall. I mean, I should have known because I built it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so with the plants. So as I said, yeah, we're still building the waterfall, but uh, I don't have much more to say about waterfalls. It's just a waterfall. But anyway, so with the plants, basically, as I said before, I have some sort of like a catalog built up for plants that I assume would be endemic probably the wrong word but let's just say would grow naturally in Kayan al -Bashar. and even though Kayan al -Bashar is basically a fancy city like it's floating like I'm talking about realism and then I'm talking about a floating city a floating Arabian slash Islamic style city with a well a ziggurat which is um destroyed but also is kind of inspired by the hanging gardens of Babylon so uh, yeah I do realize that sometimes it's a little bit weird if I talk about realism but anyway I should probably really get back into well what I wanted to talk about in the first place otherwise I'm just going to go on weird dangers all the time but anyway so again I think this is the third time but I've built up like a catalog of plants naturally found in Kayan Al Bashar and that helps in two ways. First off, it does create like a cohesive look to Kayan Al Bashar because, well, if you have just random plants everywhere, unless it's like man made, because if, well, let's say with the palace that can have a lot more difference or variety in plants than, let's say, the flooded cigarette. Because the flooded cigarette, I think, is just like it's left there and nature has taken over. While Palace is, of course, like the guards are going to be mostly man made. Even though they're still chaotic, but that's just because I like chaotic nature. I don't like, like, let's say the guards of Versailles. Now I'm like, Versailles, Versailles? Uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but I think you guys know what I mean. And as I think I already said before I think you guys also have already given up on my pronunciation and well yeah let's just move on I wanted to make a point but I think I'm beating a dead horse or I think that's the expression for that I 
don't know. But uh, yeah, so for the plants, if you have like a catalog of like naturally grown plants in a place, even if it's a fancy place like Kayan Albachar, it does help you to create like a cohesive look to the place. So I did the same thing with Ozaru, the same thing with Theonopolis. It's just like over time you just find plants that are like, I really like these plants, I like how they work together, and then you just keep using them because you know that like well you basically just create a style for your shoe bar wherever you use it i mean you could also use this in let's say um city skylines i have i have that game but i've never really touched it or really gone into it but mostly because i uh, don't have the patience and i want to just be like do every little nitty bitty thing I mean, I basically have abandoned the grass or the long grass that Frontier provides and just built my own. Just because I didn't like how the long grass that Frontier gave us looked. But uh, yeah, that's just personal opinion, of course. But yeah, so for Kayan Albachar, there's, let's just say, uh, actually a lot of these plants aren't really desert plants. <laughs> They're just thrown together just because they look good and work together and as i said it makes a cohesive look to the place it also makes the place like especially with a fantasy city gives it that sense of realism because i mean you won't find let's say um tundra plants somewhere in south america and then if you build like a catalog up for plants in your zoo even though it's a fantasy zoo it does give a sense of like this could be a real place and these plants could be naturally found there just because they are everywhere. <laughs> and um, yeah, today I'm also actually going really into like the, as I would call it the three tier system that I also use for building plants, which first off is basically grass. As I said, I don't like the grass that Frontier has given us. It's not that the grass is bad, but I just, you know, I want to be involved in literally everything. <laughs> so uh, by now, if I just pan over to this habitat, it's, well, my frame rate drops by uh, 10. So uh, yeah, the this one habitat already has a little bit of an impact. Of course, not enough that I can or at least not enough that it hinders me, but I do notice that like, well, I think by now all the plants combined, I hit my mic, sorry for that, but all the plants combined in this one habitat are probably around, well, maybe even over the blueprint limit. So around 4K plants. And uh, yeah, they're sort of like, first of all, ground covering. So I did that before, it's basically just the candelabra trees sunk it into the ground a new tree actually i don't know the name anymore of it i mean there's also like the basically the leaves on the ground i think this my brain just thinks of scaviola but that's probably not the name but yeah that those and then just the elephant grass so there are like four things that just make up all the ground covering and then later on as i'm Probably I've been, yeah, I've been building that for, uh, I think, 10 minutes. No, not 10 minutes. I mean, the video is not even 10 minutes. Where's my brain today? But uh, yeah, as I've been building for some time, then usually comes the, well, higher plants. I also consider flowers with that, actually, like the bushes and the flowers. And yeah, I do use a lot of trees, actually, as just shrubbery and such. And then, of course, like the highest tier is trees. Like those are always going to be the highest plants. And here is where I was a little bit like, I want to add another tree, like to basically the catalog of trees naturally found in Kayan Albashar. But in the end, I actually thought of removing one <laughs> because the, I think fox trail, co not, not coconut trees, but foxtail palm trees i kind of grown to not really dislike but also not really like anymore 
just the way the leaves or the palm looks like so i might actually remove one tree instead of adding one tree because the tree that i use also for like ground covering for like the first tier of plants i kind of wanted to also use as like a normal tree but in the end it just looked a little bit too dense of a tree if you know what i mean like the Sudanese incense tree I think that I've been using the lovely pink tree <laughs> yeah I keep calling it a pink tree because I always just forget the name I think cherry lotus or something like that but both of those trees they just look very light and then of course you have the palm trees which are always almost light like maybe the fox still as I said before not that light but that's also the reason that I maybe start to dislike it but um, yeah so in the end um, I actually for once really just stuck to that like tier system and saw how I would build if I really just stuck to it because usually I kind of build in clusters or just small compact areas which is great if you have like a very short attention span like me so that you know by the time you're finished with one area usually my attention span is basically gone but here i just try to like all right now let's get a larger area use that tier system that i've been talking about that i use more subconsciously like i'm not like really consciously thinking like oh i want to build this or it use it in this way it's mainly just thinking like all right these are like the four layers of plants that I need to add and then you know I usually do that in a compact area and as I said it works if you have a really short attention span like me but it also sort of I would say not completely sabotage the shoe but it does not really help if you want to make like a cohesive larger area which is what something that I saw slowly develop in the flooded cigarette which basically was like oh i have this ruined area then i have this well dark camp which kind of was like two separate areas and they didn't really connect in my opinion so i might just go into you know building larger areas but then you know doing ground covering or like the first tier of the plants and then you know basically taking a break and then doing the rest yeah i'm sometimes trying new things even if it's like the minimal amount of difference between the two <laughs> but um, yeah so this is also something I quickly want to mention so I have sort of ruined the front area of the ziggurat but I didn't want to do that with the like the side and back just because well from the front of course it looks completely ruined there are ruins in front of the building but as i said i think in the first no not in the first but in the second episode of building the flooded cigarette or the great cigarette of ur as it was then still known i wanted it to look like from the palace gardens you can see the cigarette from there i wanted it to look pristine and still like completely built up and then a moment you get closer to it, you just see that it is a ruin. And I wanted to have the same effect with the back, but the back is a desert. So I can't like cover it with a huge amount of trees and foliage. So the back and the, well, the side that we're working on right now are going to be completely pristine. This might also be a little bit that like I wanted to have like a little bit of the ziggurat still as it would be or at least when if it was restored it would look like and of course i can use the backstory like these sites are already repaired and they are still working on the front which might be a little bit weird because um maybe you want to focus on the front first because that's like the actual entrance to the ziggurat but hey as I said, the back is a desert, so maybe they were like, let's just get the worst bit out of the way first and then move on to the easier bits. But back to the plants, because uh, otherwise I'm going to be rambling 
constantly about the cigarettes and today's episode is really just all about the plants. So I have actually changed a little, well now I'm going back into not no plant therapy but I need to get this quickly off my chest but I have changed a little bit about the, well basically how the cigarette is connected to the rest of the habitat. I used to have like that ruined wall that you might still remember and that one bridge that the staff would use but I basically just changed them with well the bridges that I'm going to build later. Yeah I quickly needed to get that out of my head just so that I can focus on the plants again. But yeah for the plants or the flowers again building up a catalog of like these plants I can use or these flowers I can use and these are the situations I can use them in. So there are a lot of like plants that are like really easily found in these oasis like settings that I built but then can be found in the desert setting that I built later on. So for example most of the flowers aren't in the desert setting of course because when I think of flowers I just think delicate plants like I think flowers are probably like the delicate or the most delicate plants that Kian Al-Bashar will have. I mean I think even the pink trees are probably a little bit more resilient than all the flowers. So all the flowers are usually going to be centered around well areas with water. So an oasis I do well I do think that I will not really stick to like oh all the islands without water are going to be desert islands because then it's a little bit restrictive otherwise I would need to have a lot of floating water rocks as I would call them whereas Ali I will call them floaty boys or floaty rock boys I yeah my brain is off today maybe because of all the plants that sounds very wrong <laughs> but anyway so as I said some plants are you are not going to find of course in a desert setting that is going to be on the back of the ziggurat well the desert setting is there just because there's no well there's no water there I don't know why I wanted to explain that it's just there's no water there so it's a desert and I just liked to have that transition between the oasis and then just a desert but anyway so there are a lot of flowers a lot of just greenery and all kinds of foliage around the oasis then also with like the edges of the rocks or the floating rocks there is also flowers there it's usually these um uh, i'm like really hoping that i like quickly show the name but uh, no i just show the tags of where these flowers are but i think well let's just say the flowers that i just placed those cypress trees and the other flowers that I first thought looked very strange like those pink flowers that you see all over the place like those are also flowers that I use on the edges of all the floating rocks this doesn't make any sense because well the edges of the floating rocks are just rock so there shouldn't be any plants there but it just looked very barren if there weren't any and then well if I try to keep something minimal you guys know it doesn't work out so in the end I did kind of build up a style of like these are how the edges of all the floating rocks are probably going to look like so probably the rest of the floating rocks will not be as densely covered as this because well uh, I wanted to keep the oasis or well yeah this is an oasis but uh, I wanted to keep it simple yeah it's a jungle and there are pink trees which uh I really like the, actually the largest pink tree just because of the root system. Like the smaller trees don't, well they basically have just stumps with a little bit of like uh, pointy edges and the biggest one ha actually has a root system. So uh, yeah I love to just place that tree on like the edge of a cliff or on the edge of rocks just so that you can see those roots just sticking out. Yeah sometimes um, I just place plants on a weird place just because of one feature of those plants. But so for the edges of the floating rocks, they are unnaturally, naturally. That makes no sense. Like they're unnaturally full of plants. But then the floating rocks also somehow 
have an infinite amount of water, so Kayan Al Bashar makes no sense. But in some way, if you really dig down into it, it has a little bit of sense. But now back to some actual building buildings. So, well, it's not completely a building because it's a tent. Because I wanted to go with the story of like the people of Kayan Al Bashar are finally like restoring their history in a way but of course i wanted to build plants and not egg or plants i wanted to build tents instead of actual buildings because i don't think that they would you know stay there indefinitely like after the restoration work was done they probably back up and leave again and uh, that's why i basically built tents and i finally figured out how to make them so uh yeah, I, I really like how they look. They are very simple and I struggled a lot with the water. Because the tents are almost on the same level as the water. And then I just thought like, alright, with the littlest bit of like a storm or just rain, those tents would just be completely flooded. So I wanted to make them a little bit higher, but uh, yeah, and in the end... I don't know what happened, but um, I usually use, if I want to make a flat area, the, I think, flatten to foundation tool, but let's just say that only flattened it to a certain degree, and if I made it higher, it flattened it to the same place again. So in the end, I just raised it up and smoothed it, and it's not completely flat, but it doesn't flood anymore. I mean, this is probably thinking too much into the game because, well, there's no flooding in the game, but, you know, storyline always helps with making something make sense. Like, there's always some kind of story, whether it's in real life or in, well, Planet Zoo. Well, this isn't saying that you need to have a story behind the place, of course, but it does help with making something easier to build in a way but uh, yeah i just basically built a beer or just uh let's just say a way that the staff because the staff doesn't actually come here actually this place has been very much loved by all the flamingos which i mean i thought they would kind of stuck around dark's camp but um no they yeah, they have just basically abandoned that place. Maybe it's just because this place is new and now they're like clustering here. And so eventually they will just find their place, but just because this place is new. Also, this is something I quickly want to mention. I hope that one time we will get to crates that the animals are in as just pieces. I mean, they look so great and I'm sad that we don't have them. Like, it's... Especially like the smaller animals, if the, you put them in crates, the crates just look so good. <laughs> this, in a way, is probably not the best way to think, but then again, like I'm using plants who mostly as some kind of city builder. But yeah, so um, back to the plants, because now we are finally uh, building an actual desert area. And with the desert area, the first thought is of course sand. A lot of sand. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to do that. Again, like with the edges of the rock flo or the floating rock islands, they are of course going to be somewhat magically full of foliage or foliage. But for the desert itself, I also didn't want to just have like just sand. I mean, I already hate sand enough as it is because uh, it just gets everywhere. But uh, yeah, when I think of a desert, I usually just for myself just don't think of just something completely covered in sand i usually think of just a place of course which is hot and does have a lot of sand but also with like tiny bits of plants mostly the candelabra trees because that just looks a little bit drier and then just placing like the minimal amount of trees mostly at like the where the area transitions from the oasis into the desert that's where i usually place a lot of those trees and then, uh, yeah, figure out, like, I want to get a somewhat dry-looking foliage. 
which is still small and low to the ground because I just don't think that large bushes would make much sense in a desert. So yeah, it's basically just this entire video is just like trying to make the plants make somewhat sense that it's somewhat believable without, you know, limiting creativity. But yeah, that's uh, basically going to be it for today. We have finished the flooded cigarette and I'm just going to leave you with actually not before and after views this time, but just a complete overview of the flooded cigarette. So I hope you can enjoy the views and what we have created. And I also hope that you like the video. If you have liked the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And I will see you in the next video. Have an amazing day, guys, and bye-bye.